Welcome to Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle. I'm Michelle Humphreys. And I'm Nina Keegan. Welcome to our program today. Uh, today we're going to talk about how to get your prayers answered. Uh, it seems like uh, a lot of times we are just really praying for something and we're just not seeing it, some answers to our prayers. And um, I, there's just sometimes there's some things that you might not have thought about that might mm -hmm. be hindering your prayers or blocking your blessings. And so Amen. we want to get to the bottom of this and we want to you know, get everybody. And God does answer prayer. And we he have does. so many testimonies. We could be here all day and all, all night day. talking about the goodness of God and how He has specifically answered prayer. The yes. detailed prayers that we have prayed. It's been amazing. And even the simple prayers. We don't yes. even have to be all detailed about it because sometimes it's just about calling on the name of Jesus. It, you know, if you're saved, if you've been born again, you have the Holy Spirit living in you mm -hmm. and He's our helper. Yes. He's our advocate, our counselor. He's everything we need. And sometimes you can just say, Holy Spirit, help me. Help me right now. It could be, I need help in this situation. I need help for my family or loved one or for a job or my finances. Just could be so simple because you can just get into an agreement with what Jesus already died for you to have. And if the Bible says you can have it, it can be yours. Amen. And that's all you have to do is get into an agreement for the manifested presence of God to be over your situation and to handle all the things that that you need. He's our source. The Bible says he's yes. our source. He's everything you need. He's the great I am. And if you think about that statement in the Bible, it is left blank. It just says, I am. It doesn't say what he is, because if Amen. you were going to fill in that blank, it would be more than the Bible itself. Yeah. Because if we ever do a teaching on I am, it, you, it's, it's almost unspeakable because he is everything. everything. Yes. I like to finish that statement with here. I yes. am here, you know, because when you know that he's here, because he says he'll never leave you or forsake you, then you can just say, reach into his glory and say, Amen. God, I need you now. I need you to do this for me. I need this. And your word says that you are my source, that you'll take care of my finances. Your word says that by your son's stripes, I am healed. If you need healing, if you need salvation, if you need finances, if you need restoration for a marriage, for a family of some kind of some situation, God is your source. He is what you need. You can call on the name of Jesus and just say, get into an agreement with Amen. Jesus, what he already died for you to have, and you can have it. Amen. The Bible says, Two or more gather and agree. And, and that, it can be done. It shall be done. That the according mountains, to the will yes, of God. The mountains shall be level plains. Whatever the mountain is in your life. Right. It can be a level plain. Right. And, and you know, so many different times, uh, you know, you pray and maybe the Lord doesn't answer right away. Maybe it takes time. You know, maybe... He's working on someone else's heart. And when, when he's, when say for example, you're praying for a loved one, mm -hmm. God is working, but you may not see it. You know, he's, he's talking to them and he is working. So how do we go from, you know, the, the place where we're praying and then to answer prayer? You know, sometimes it's just time. You know, you have to wait it out because God is dealing with a person. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, a lady telling me one time, I was praying for something and it was for another person. And uh, she said, you can fast because I had been on a fast for quite a while. And she said, you can fast until you are a stick and God's still not going to make that person do anything because he does not take over their will. So, but, but I did get my breakthrough. It did take a long time. So don't be discouraged if you've prayed and you didn't get your answer right then. You know, mm -hmm. so, but, but we want to talk about answered prayer today. How do we get our prayers answered? You know, I, I, I have had uh, times when God uh, didn't answer my prayer for a while and it, it, it sort of stretched my faith. And I've had prayers like I, I've shared this before, but it's like the, one of the most amazing uh, answers to prayer I've ever gotten, which was, you know, I was just, just devastated about a situation in my life and I asked the Lord, I said, uh, you know, it was six in the morning. I said, God, you have got to, to, to tell me, you know, where I am on the map. Because don't, you know, sometimes you just feel like you're all alone mm -hmm. and no one, it, like, God, are you there? I know you're there. I know that. But 
I, I, I need affirmation. Yeah. And I said, Lord, let someone call me right now and tell me you know where I am on the map. Even though that's kind of ridiculous because I know he knows where I am on the map. So I, it's six in the morning and I get this phone call and it's a friend of mine and she says, girl, I was praying and God said, call Michelle right now and tell her that I didn't bring her this far to drop her off now. You know, sometimes prayer gets answered like that and sometimes it takes time. Yep. You know, nothing changed in my situation though. Not one thing changed in my situation for about another year. What I was praying for did not occur for about another year, but I knew God knew where I was. So sometimes when we're praying, we just need to remember who we are in Christ and that he knows where we are and he is listening and he's working on it. You just can't see it yet. And that's what faith is. I always think about prayer. Uh, if you look at, have you ever seen one of those big jigsaw puzzles? Mm -hmm. And when you're choosing one in the store, you can select the jigsaw puzzle by the picture that's on the box. Mm -hmm. So you know ahead of time right. what you're going to be making when you put the puzzle together. But I always think about God. Um, you know, every day of our lives is like a piece of that puzzle. Right. And we just haven't seen the big picture yet, what it's going to come out like. But God knows what that picture looks right. like. God knows what the end looks like. He's the author and the finisher. He knows our stories. He's written them from the end to the beginning. And so he who began a good work is going to finish it until the day of completion. And so sometimes we might be really struggling and it's just a piece of the puzzle. And so whatever God's got to do right. in order to answer our prayers, he's got to work on all the other pieces that need to fit in around our peace, mm -hmm. whether that's family members, whether that's giving us a holy discontent in a way to maybe move us from one job that's not good for us into a better job, but we might have to go through the pain of losing a job. Mm -hmm. But if you didn't go through that, you might not have gotten to this way better job that God's waiting for you to right. give you. And so sometimes, you know, we have to trust him that it's not just us right here on this little puzzle piece. It's all about the big picture at the end of the day. It's about what's on the box. It's about what this whole picture is, that beautiful picture that God has drawn and written for each one of us. And we don't get that bird's eye view like he does. And he can look down and he can see all around it and who needs to be part of that plan. Whether it's, you know, I always think about how there's really no coincidences and, uh, and no. people that come alongside of us. And I know God can answer prayers in the most unusual ways. I mean, my boys uh, golf, they both love to golf. And um, one day they were at the golf course and there was just a gentleman that was playing ahead of them that was an older gentleman and he, he was by himself. Mm -hmm. And the boys just you know, invited him to play along with them. And at first, you know, they, talk, they tell the story, they go, oh, well, let's just ask him to play with us so we don't have to wait on him. You know, kind of like <laughs> of their own little, but you know, this man has turned out to be such a blessing in their lives and is such a businessman. And he has, he, he's very, very close to them. It's been a few years now that he's been in their life he speaks into them. He helps them. In the, he's a retired, very successful businessman. He speaks into their life. He, he, he shows them business ways. He's given them all kinds of contacts and has even flown with them to meet clients. I mean, it's been such a blessing in their life. It was such an answer to prayer because they were sort of stuck, like hitting a wall in their mm -hmm. business. And then, you know, but through prayer, because we were standing and praying right. for their companies, God just leads them to someone on the golf course. I mean, it can be something so simple in the way God can just, it, who's next to you? Who's right there right. Who, that's ready and waiting to bless you? So really just keep your eyes open, but wait on him, knowing that his timing is always perfect. You don't ever want to have anything that you're not ready to have. Right. Because, you know, think about this, to, to whom much is given, much is expected. And, you know, a lot of times God's got to do a work in your heart and prepare you for the blessings that are to come, to prepare you for wealth, prepare you for things. Right. And many times our hardships, like if we're sick or if we're, you know, we're having a struggle, we can, those are the times that stretch our faith, faith and cause us to be so close to the Lord. Those things are not, not, they're not for, they're just not to go by the wayside. It is always to serve a, pur a purpose. Right. Really seek the Lord in those tough times if that's where you are right, right. now. And God says that the, that the testing of our faith is like precious gold. Yeah. And we get refined when we're going through the trial. We always want to pray ourselves out of a trial. Mm -hmm. And yet if the testing of our faith is like gold, then what are we doing? Mm -hmm. You know, who doesn't like gold, right? <laughs> you know, I mean, we we all want to stand before the Lord purified like gold. And 
sometimes God's answer is yes, sometimes it's no, and sometimes it's not yet. And sometimes we struggle with any answer that's not yes right now. You know, we want it yes and we want it now. And that, that is not always how the Lord works. Sometimes God has to save us from ourselves, from yes. what we think we want. Exactly. Because sometimes if we, we were to get the answer to some prayer that really wasn't good for us, you know, you, you know why, would, why would you ever give your kid something? Like think about a little kid that they're just begging for candy and they just want candy and they, they can't figure out why you won't give them all this candy. But you know that that's not good for them to have all right. that. And yet, you know, it makes you sad to see your kid crying about something. Mm -hmm. But you know, God's, God's just not up there like this holy Santa Claus that's just gonna, you know, give us everything that we want. He is going to give us what is good for us, what we need. And at, at the end of the day, you can look back and always say, thank you that you didn't give me that. Thank you that this did not work out. Or thank you, I saw at the time it was so hard and I had to go through this trial, but thank you that you brought me through that. And now, because he will do, exceedingly abundantly more than you can ask or think if you wait on him. Right. If you try to get in the flesh and do it yourself, you will get it wrong. Well, you know, I remember uh, years ago, I saw this testimony of this lady who had, she had died and her daddy was just at her hospital bed calling on the Lord and believing there were people around her hospital bed that were praying. And she said she could see their prayers going up in golden beams of light. You know, wow. when you think about your prayers are ever before the Lord. Here in Revelations, it says, and the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints, that's you, even though you may not feel like a saint, you are a saint because you're, you're washed Amen. in the blood of Jesus. With the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. So your prayers are important to the Lord. He hears your prayers. They go up in golden beams of light. Think about that. Mm -hmm. I mean, your prayers are like incense before the Lord. When we talked about Cornelius on an earlier episode, it said that, that his offerings and his prayers had come up as a fragrant offering before the Lord. Amen. As a result, mm -hmm. his whole family got saved. Mm -hmm. You know, so sometimes when you pray, you don't have this big emotional experience. In fact, sometimes it's by faith that you pray. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just praying and, and it feels maybe like you're going through the motions. Do it anyway. You know, do it. Come before the Lord with thanksgiving and praise and then get into your intercession. Begin to, to make your request known to God. It says, bring to him all kinds of prayers and petitions. Don't be afraid to ask for something little. Don't be afraid to ask for something mm -hmm. huge. God is honored by our request. Well, it, it's all small to God. He owns everything. He has everything. He can do everything. And sometimes when, when we think he can only do the small stuff, we're putting God in a box right. and we're discounting the holiness and the limit, the unlimited yes. uh, abilities of God that Amen. he can do anything. Miracles were God's idea. And Amen. he just didn't one day decide, you know, I'm retiring from this miracle business. I, I, I just, I'm out don't feel like doing it anymore. That's not God. Amen. And when we can come into an agreement with him, knowing that we can have what the word says we can have, it's about us. God wants us to know the word because if we know the word, it's our arsenal. Mm -hmm. And when we need something, we can say, well, you said this in the word and I stand on this and Lord, we come to you with your word, which is a great way to see answers to your prayers by coming with the word of God, which is the offensive weapon. It can go through anything that you need, anything, any breakthrough. You can come with the word of God and you can say, this is what you said. You said that we shall, we, if we had faith the size of a mustard seed, which is pretty small, that we can see these mountains be level Amen. plains, that we can see... Uh, we can see the mountains falling into the sea, that when two or more gather and coming into an agreement that we can have what we ask if it's according to his will. And how do you know that? It's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. If it's in the Bible, you can have it. If the Amen. Bible says you can have it, it can be yours. That's why it's so important to know the word. And to know God's will. God's will is his word. So if his word says you can be healed, it's, it, 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 God's word does say, it is my will that you be in good health and prosper even as your soul prospers. So that's that's mm -hmm. God's will. You can pray boldly 
that you will be that you will be healed. Pray God will heal you. Yep. You know, you don't have to say, Lord, if it's your will. It is his will. God said it here in his word. So don't let the enemy trick you and, and make your prayer less effective as a result. It also says here, it says, um, it says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So I always go through these gymnastics and I've said this before when I pray, I immediately hear the accuser as I'm praying. It's like, what are you doing praying? You know, who are you to pray? Discounting. Well, and I, you know what? I have to agree with him. Yep, you're right. But who is he when I pray? I'm not coming in my name. I'm coming in the name of Jesus and he is his righteousness is what covers me. I'm clothed in his robe of righteousness so I can go boldly to the throne of grace to find help in times of trouble. So this is how you get answered prayer. You, you don't try to come in mm -hmm. your own righteousness. You, you, don't, you don't say, I can't pray because I wasn't good enough today or I, I did this or that or I sinned. You say, I confess my sins. I ask you to forgive me. I repent of my sins, not just confess them. I repent of them and I turn from them. Now I come in your righteousness, not my own. And I, and then begin to make your request known to God and he will answer you. I am just mm -hmm. amazed at all the different prayer requests that have been answered. It, it is amazing. You know, uh, I think about that when we come, you know, when you said the prayer of the righteous man availeth much. I looked that up one time and it says, Availeth much means you come with all the power. You have all the power. The power, it, 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 it comes with all of that. When a, a righteous man prays, you come with the power of all of heaven behind Amen. it. You come with the power of Jesus to cause that to just break through all things that you need. But the one thing you need to do is to not be double-minded about it. Yes. We cannot pray and speak all these prayers and decide and declare and pray for the breakthrough and just set it all before the Lord and then turn around and say, well, this is, this is my situation. It doesn't look like there's any, you know, hope or this is what the doctor said, or this is what this says, or every job I look for, I'm disqualified, or, you know, I don't have the super, the qualifications, but God can supernaturally qualify you. Mm -hmm. He can open doors you never dreamed of. He, he can make a way where there is no way. The reply of the tongue shall come from the Lord. Mm -hmm. He is, he can trump what any doctor says. You know, you know, we have to just get into that place where we are not double-minded. The Bible says that if you you are double-minded, you are in, unstable in all of your ways. And a, so a single-minded person will be so stable. You'll be stable in your ways. And it says that if you are double-minded, the Bible says you should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Mm -hmm. So are you being double-minded? If you want your prayers answered, check that. Because yeah, are you praying, praying for, for one your finances thing? And, you're, and then as soon as you finish praying, you're like, I'm so broke. Right. You know, if you're, if you're doing that, forget about it. You know, right. just begin to You've just look negated for ways, every prayer you just prayed. Look for ways to make new income. Mm -hmm. Think of, you're not stuck. Nobody says you have to remain where you are. Begin to ask the Lord if there's another way out of, of whatever cycle of, of, uh, of lack you're mm -hmm. in. You know, ask the Lord for new income streams. Ask the Lord for new ideas. Maybe you're gonna uh, start a new business. I mean, you, you never know. God has all kinds of ways. You're not stuck. When you're a Christian, you have limitless possibilities. And when we pray, anything can happen. I mean, anything. You never know what can happen. Well, and the, the fact of, of the matter is, it's not about us anyway. No. And so when you, if you are, you know, basically not giving your whole faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, evidence of things not seen. If, if we could see everything, we wouldn't need faith. And so that is the evidence is that we're, 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 of the hope that we have in, is in Jesus. And if you don't come with complete faith that you, what you're saying in prayer, that mm -hmm. you mean Amen. that you are praying this, that you believe wholeheartedly that God has heard your prayers, that he can and will answer his prayers according to his will, and that he loves you with an everlasting love and wants to bless you, He's eager to bless you. He wants to heal you. He wants you whole. That is his will. Yes. Those are his will for you. He wants you to prosper and succeed. It says 
It says Abraham's blessings are ours. It says he takes pleasure in the prosperity of his people. And so when you're praying, if you're praying for, for finances, if you're praying for health, when you pray the word, the word shall not return void right. and it cannot return void. So when you pray it, seal it, give it Amen. to the Lord in prayer. It is covered by the blood of Jesus. Jesus already paid the price for you to have those things for which you're praying and then walk away in complete faith and a complete knowing that you know, that you know, that you know, that yes. God is going to answer your prayers. And do not say, if someone says, well, how, how is, how's your scans or how's your health going? You say, by faith, God has made me well. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I know that, you know, I might not be where I want to be, but God's taken me there. Just always speak because as the mouth thinks, the, as the mind thinks, the man follows. Right. You have to really watch what you say and how you speak because you don't want to go, oh, I'm so sick and I have cancer. Don't own it. Don't own these things. Say, and don't Jesus tell people is taking care of it. That are negative mm -hmm. about your situation because if they're negative, then they're going to be speaking evil over your situation. So you, you, you may tell a few certain people that you know have faith that will turn it around. If you just got a bad report uh, of cancer or whatever, don't go tell your most negative friend because you know they're going to go tell ten more people that you're going to die. You know, mm -hmm. tell people who are who walk in faith and not by sight who will believe God and they will believe and, and pray the prayer of faith. It says, if there's any sick among you, go to the elders of the church and pray and you will be healed. So, you, you know, there, there are mechanisms of prayer that are, that are within the church that you need to have. It also says that when you pray, don't stop praying. Sometimes people will, you know, uh, it says, keep asking, keep seeking yep. and keep knocking. Mm -hmm. And then the door will come, you know, will open up to you. So you want to make sure that you are absolutely Absolutely, consistently praying. I don't care how many times you pray for something, keep praying mm -hmm. and, be, and never give up. And a lot of times after I have prayed something very specifically, my next prayers will be, I thank you, God, that you have got it. I thank you that you are working on it. I thank mm -hmm. you that, you know, I might not see, you know, the full results now, but I thank you that you, it's going to be better than what mm -hmm. I'm even praying for because that's what you say in your word. Ephesians 3.20 says, He's going to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ever right. ask or think. So more than you've ever thought of, more than you can even begin to think of, he wants to do more than that. And so many times we've seen a prayer turn around and be, be answered and in so much better of a way that we could have even thought of when we've seen him answer us. Mm -hmm. And so when you, when you just, if you start to pray that way is, is in more of a grateful attitude, I thank you that you were working it out. I thank you that you have this. I thank you that I can have peace in the Amen. waiting. I thank you that you are taking care of all things. The Bible says in John 4, 17, that in this world we are to be like Jesus. Well, I looked that up in several different um, uh, translations and it says our standing in the world is identical with Jesus. Another one is we live like Jesus here in the world. And as Jesus is, so are we. We get to be like Jesus in this Amen. world. Jesus went to his father and prayed. Jesus prayed to his father for everything he needed. And even when he was going to go be crucified, he said, you know, if this is your will, take this cup from me. Mm -hmm. And you know, he, he, he felt fear. He felt things when he was in human form. So Jesus knows everything you're going through. Amen. He knows when you're afraid for family members. He wept over his friend who was, was dead. He, he, things happened that hurt him while he was here on earth. He felt all those human emotions and he knows what you're going through. And we can be like him and go through him, through his name to the Father and believe him for all the things we need to be manifest. We mm -hmm. can just get into an agreement with the word of God over the situation. Jesus yes. died for your healing. He died for he your died. everything yes. and you he, need. And it says men ought to always pray and not faint. And then he tells the story yes. of an unjust judge yes. where a woman kept coming to this unjust judge and she kept asking and asking and asking and, and, and he finally granted her request because he was, he just kept hearing it. And so basically the Bible is saying, 
the Lord loves you. He wants to answer your request. He's not an unjust judge. He's a just God. Yes. He loves you. He wants good things for you. It is his will for you to be blessed. So just give your heart and your soul to the Lord as you pray. Pour out, talk to the Lord like he's your best friend because you know what? He is your best friend. Yes. He's the one, he, the Bible says he will stick closer to you than a brother. Mm -hmm. He is going to take good care of you. And, and just know that if you keep asking, you keep seeking and you keep knocking, you keep praying his word, which is his will. He's going to do all kinds of things in your life. Yes, Ex amen. The Bible says exceeding and abundantly more than you can even ask or think. He's going to pour out blessings onto your life. Mm -hmm. How can you beat that? I mean, th that's the thing, you know, he, it, he, it's always, we can be changed from glory to glory to glory to glory. And that's by trusting him all along the way, even when it hurts, because sometimes we have to be a, like uncomfortable as we walk, as we get closer to the Lord, sometimes he's peeling off some things that we need to get rid of in order for us to receive the blessing that we need, mm -hmm. to receive the prayer answered. Sometimes he's, he's, you know, getting those old things out of us, any, any unforgiveness, any grudge we're hanging on to, any old besetting sin. If you want your prayers answered, you need to ask the Holy Spirit to show you any way that you might be erring, any way that you are, you know, even like, you ever think about even where you're hurting your own self, like you think about your, your own conscience. What is your conscience saying that you need to let go? What do you know? That is the Holy Spirit. What do you know that you are doing repeatedly over and over and over and over again? God, your sin is not hidden from God. Right. He sees everything. You cannot hide from him. You cannot lie. You cannot even just do halfway sin. You can't just think you're doing a little bit. You've got to give it all. You've got to give it all. And you've got to turn that ship around and whatever you're doing that's causing you to have one more trip around the mountain and causing you to not have your prayers answered. And you need to relinquish that now and give it to the foot of the cross and trust that Jesus Amen. already died for you. Otherwise, what did he die for? Amen. I always think Jesus plus anything equals nothing. But Jesus plus nothing but the faith in what he's done for you equals absolutely everything. Amen. There's nothing we need more than the blood of Jesus, but he wants it all. Every secret little thing hiding in your heart, any little thing that you think you're getting away with, any little thing you think this is the last time, he wants it all. You lay it down at the foot of the cross and I promise you, I promise you doors will open. I promise you breakthroughs will come when you give it all and make him the Lord of your life. He wants you to spend time being devoted to him. If you are not taking time to pray every single day, we are encouraging you to stop yes. what you're, st totally change your patterns and begin today yes. to, to, to take time out, carve out time every day. Seek first the kingdom of heaven and then all things will come unto you. Lord, we just pray for every single person here yes. that uh, within the sound of our voices, we ask that you bless each one and we ask that you put a mantle of intercessory prayer on each and every one, Lord, yes. that they will begin to intercede for, for themselves and also for their family members and for the world, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. We invite you to log in to NinaAndMichelle.com. Send us your prayer requests. We are happy to, to hear from you and see what God's doing in your life. We love you guys. God bless.